bright and light in here. <laughs> so, I'm going to be talking today about applied science and one of the greatest mysteries of all, human relationships. <laughs> they befuddle us, muddle us, bedazzle us, and twist us around into all kinds of new shapes. And uh, they have an incredible potential within them that I'm going to speak to. Um, did everybody have a chance to hear Hamid's a talk last night. Was anybody not here? Because I'm going to kind of take off from where he ended. Uh, okay, I'll do a little summing up. Um, a little bit about entanglement. My, I, I love science, but uh, unfortunately, my, I know enough to get me into trouble, and sometimes enough to get me just a little bit out of trouble. Um, uh, I know a little bit about entanglement. I have a great tutor, Hamid, and I read Science News Magazine. It's really a great magazine. <laughs> uh, so entanglement really has to do with the um, information that two particles have after being in relationship to one another, or as a molecule decays into two particles, they're basically coming from the same origin. When you interrupt their relationship spatially, and they are far, far away, they still act as though they're one. They act, in other words, the relationship of the information traveling between them is zero. There's no relationship because there's no distance. So that information exchanged is instantaneous. There's an instantaneous correlation. And that correlation is significant for us in terms of relationship because in human relationship that potential speaks to us. In fact, think of somebody that you love right now who's not here. When you feel you really love them, do they feel far? If you're a mother, think of your child. When they're in danger and you're not near them, do you sometimes get a sense of it? These are ways in which that kind of entanglement process occurs in human relationships. And we call it intuition, we call it empathy, we call it lots of different things. But it's actually possible to understand human relationships and their potential much more closely if we understand a little bit about the basis for them. In non-dual realization, the vastness of that magnificent, uh, pristine consciousness, everything is of one taste. You can feel the unity, you can feel that everything is one. When you peer at the world, at objects, you can see that they're simply objects of awareness. That they are awareness, or they are transparent, or they are consciousness. However, it's not clear in the non-dual realization what the relationships of one thing to another are. How do they relate to each other? How do they, and how do people relate to one another? And what does that mean? When we're in relationship with someone, we're not just, even if we're in a, um, a very expanded state, we're still in relationship to that other person or that group of people. We're all in some kind of relationship with one another right now. There's an interconnectedness of the people that are here. And there's a larger connectedness. We could go out into the cosmos with, yes, we're connected to everything. But when we're actually with another person, we can make contact with them. We really feel they're there. 
And we feel there's something real about that. It doesn't feel like, no, they're just one taste, it's just one thing. No, something happens when you're in touch, in contact with somebody, something else starts to occur. There's a kind of looping that can happen. There's a way in which there's not just my eyes are meeting your eyes, but there's all of me that is coming through. The eyes, the heart, the belly, the whole presence of the person is there. Not just that they're a body with feelings and a mind and a brain, it's the totality of that person. And it feels like much more than just the physical location with something peering out of it. What is that that constitutes that totality? And that's where individual consciousness has significance. In fact, it's individual consciousness that makes relationship with another possible. So individual consciousness, what do I mean by that? Individual consciousness is the unity of being, is that field and vastness of consciousness that is creating a location within itself, of itself, to peer into the world. And each individual that appears to be separated because of the physical appearance of body is actually a consciousness that is revealing itself at the surface as a body. That your individual consciousness has a body. Your body doesn't have an individual consciousness inside it. So when I talk about inner realization, I don't mean it's in here. I mean it's inner to the physical. Inner realization is in here. In fact, it's so inner, it's in each molecule, and every molecule is constituted of the consciousness, which makes the table the consciousness. It isn't other than consciousness. However, it is appearing as a table. So consciousness sculpts itself into reality, and the living consciousness develops itself into a living be in living beings, nature of all kinds. So this living beingness, when we're in touch with someone, when we're in contact with somebody else, we feel their living beingness. We feel their consciousness. We're not just connecting to something that is opaque and surface and uh, appearing as a body. We're actually in touch with their consciousness. And the more opaque, the less awake that consciousness is, the more it does feel like an object. The more we feel when we believe we're a body and that's all we are, and we have no spiritual interest, no, nothing more refined than that, we act like a physical object, we meet other people like physical objects, and appearance is all we are. The more deeply we get into our experience of what we are and have experiences of the vastness of consciousness, of whatever way we experience that deeper inner beingness, the more that is expressed through the location of our individual consciousness. Your realization impacts your expression, or it can. It at least gives us the opportunity to know there's more than just this body. But the individual consciousness is the expression of that underlying unity within your individual, it is your individual consciousness inseparable from the ground of being. Just like the ocean has waves and it has currents. Actually, I like the analogy of a, 
a current in the ocean because a wave pops out of it. And actually consciousness doesn't pop out of itself to come into the world. It actually creates time and space and then it enters itself into the world in the form of individual consciousness. It's all consciousness. So there's no separation. So the individual consciousness is a current in the ocean. And that current has specific qualities and characteristics. You notice we're not all generic, right? You have your own particular qualities. No matter how realized you are, you continue to manifest specific qualities. They may become more pure, you may become more easy, you may become more uh, you become more of what you are and that more of what you are isn't like the more of what somebody else is. It's very specifically you. So entanglement in terms of the human condition means the potential for two that are of one can relate in such a way that they, there's their individual consciousness can actually interpenetrate. So entanglement for the spiritual realm is interpenetration. And interpenetration has many degrees and many ways that that can occur. Have you ever asked yourself the question, when you love somebody, why do you want to be close to them? It's a given, isn't it? When you fall in love, you cannot stand to be away from, from the one you love. When you have a baby, you've separating that first time to go to the movies and leave it with a babysitter, you can't stop thinking about it. When you're with a friend that you really like, you want to spend more time with them. There's something about love that draws people together. It's not just, oh, I really love you and it's fine for me to just view you from a distance. And it doesn't feel like, and of course there's attachment and all kinds of stuff going on there, but even without that, when you're in love with somebody, actually sometimes that is one of the few moments the average individual has of a spiritual experience. If they've never thought about spirit before, when you're in love, you start to drop things that have kept you hidden. You begin to feel a magnetic pull and you take courageous risks. You get on the phone and you make that phone call. You just can't help yourself. And you do things you never thought you could do before. Of course, you might re get rejected, you might, all kinds of things might happen, but you can't help it because love has a force to it. It has a force and it has a, a kind of draw that the more you're in touch with it, the more you feel it's got a magnetic kind of pull to it. It draws you closer. So the appearance of two are drawn together by the force of love, which is basically creating a wormhole that allows individual consciousness to dip deeper into who they are, what they are, and meet in the middle. That's what happened to Alice and Bob this morning, if you saw it. <laughs> Love draws them near, and in some mysterious way, there's a disappearance in the middle when people are really completely in love, and they come together and they, uh, interpenetrate in a way that we try to do it physically, emotionally, mentally. We try to get inside each other in every way. And we want to be as close as possible. And it's not enough that it's just physical. You want to feel the inside of somebody. You want to know what it's like to be not just with them, but you want to find out everything about them. They're a mystery to be discovered. But the entanglement is in the actual sense 
of the possibility of a realization that is not just in the expanse of two people coming together knowing the expanse. It's the indivi two individual consciousnesses whose roots are in that deep well of the expanse, but also can be just two individual consciousness that actually are the expanse. That within everything is everything else. The importance of the particular can be a kind of realization where you can see any particular as an entryway, as beings, as individual consciousnesses. We are everything and everything is us, but we emerge within time and space as individual consciousness and that pattern continues that we are that and that is what is realized. Two individuals with that kind of realization can have a kind of interpenetration that transcends time and space in every way. We can see that potential in the most superficial love relationship, whether it's friends, family, lovers. You want to be as close as possible. And what ends up happening? You start banging up against the stuff you think is you. That is our conviction that we are physical. The ego is based on a physical representation of ourselves, of the physicality, and that starts very early. It starts in the womb. We're banging up against the, the uh, uterus. We find a boundary before we even know what the word means. And that we have this sensate, constant feedback from the world we grow tall enough and get under the table and bang our head. The physical body is the basis of ego. Consciousness is a malleable substance that adheres to what it knows, and in that way it does forget what it's known. But it's possible for us as individual consciousnesses to remember what we are and not forget as we move through into the physical world, and our consciousness uses this body to move itself. How brilliant that vastness is. It says, I want to feel, I want to touch, I want to look, I want to make contact. Through sentient beings, that vastness that you are at the depth is making contact through this location that is uniquely you. So it's really, a relationship is two, but not two. It's one, but not really just one. Not two, not one, it's both. Just like the uh, entanglement is you don't have just the negative positive this way, you have it this way, and you have it both ways. So we're not two and we're not one. And the diversity is what makes it interesting, our differences. We begin to appreciate the particular individual differences. Rather than trying to be the same, we know we are the same nature. And when we're convinced of that, when we know that, differences become interesting. And that's when two come together, interpenetrate, and come out as something completely different, where the two create a field that is more than the sum of its parts. And that's where our different ideas and being at sand and hearing different perspectives, it nourishes that other thing to happen that new and novel experience that happens when you have an interchange with another. And that makes life interesting. And biology is actually based on it. You get 
You create sick babies if you have babies with your siblings. The DNA is too similar. You need to cross-pollinate and have all kinds of diversity. And that brings out more potential of being. That being expresses a potential through the multiplicity. And as we have that exchange, we find new things. And that allows for new development and new potential. Because the individual consciousness develops, grows, changes, matures, and develops in a way that we become more and more of the beings. It's like we're pupae. We're just little chrysalises. We haven't yet completely melted down inside and been transformed. The creature that we are is yet to be known. And the individual consciousness is part of that evolutionary development. So I think the potential that this interpenetration kind of relating can have is very vast. And the, it's endless, really, the kind of realization that can occur with another in relationship, friendships, love relationships, and so on. I'm eager to find out all that can happen. And that's becoming much more, have you noticed how in the last 20, 30 years, relationship has gotten more and more important? In the last 100 years, 100 years ago, people were talking about it in poetry and theater. Um, but in terms of spiritual, it's, it was very, very rare to think of relationships and to have them be part of what we're doing and what the potential can be for them in terms of a realization between two to bring out new potential, things that maybe no one has experienced before of spiritual conditions and spiritual states, that there's an endless possibility. And the diversity which is what brings out those possibilities. So in my experience, seeing people relate is like watching uh, sparklers go off. And they're different colors and different kinds and different ways that people can be together. And that's exciting. And it's interesting. And it gives us a really important place that the individual consciousness is something that expresses the potential of that undivided consciousness. That we remain undivided, yet individual. And that that individual has a very important place in our nature to express itself to express itself, but also to be exploring itself, to be, able, to be able to taste its own creations. So I don't know how much time I have left, but <laughs> five minutes. <laughs> so I think that the, the thing I'd like to be leaving you with is that Love is really the force and the draw that comes from the fact that there is a way in which that our nature is expressing itself through heart and through its incredible desire to express itself more completely and that to bring out those possibilities. And love is the, the fuel and the draw that says we are already one. We are united. 